The lymphatic system is a network of specialized vessels that plays two important roles. Firstly, it protects our body from different pathogenic infections and filters our blood from pathogenic agents that can essentially cause harm to our body and the cells of our body. And secondly, the lymphatic system also maintains fluid homeostasis. Specifically, what it does is it prevents the buildup of fluid from taking place inside the tissues of our body. Now, to see exactly what we mean by that, let's take a look at the following diagram. This diagram describes the cells of some particular tissue and these cells are shown in brown. It also describes the capillary system that is found within our tissue and wherever we have a capillary system, we also have a lymph system and the vessel of the lymph system is shown in green. So basically we have the arterial, the blood vessel shown in red that brings the oxygenated and the nutrient filled blood to the capillary of our blood vessel system. And within the capillary we have exchange between nutrients and wastes taking place. And then the venule is the blood vessel that carries the deoxygenated blood that contains the waste products back to the heart. So let's recall how the exchange of nutrients and waste products takes place within our capillary. So if we examine the arterial side of the capillary, on the arterial side we have a higher hydrostatic pressure than osmotic pressure and that's exactly why that hydrostatic pressure is able to force the blood plasma that contains the nutrients and our oxygen from the capillary and into the surrounding tissue space. And the surrounding tissue space is known as the interstitial tissue. So what happens is when the blood plasma leaves the capillaries and enters this cell tissue area that brings the nutrients such as glucose and fats and amino acids and oxygen to the cells of that surrounding tissue and at the same time as that fluid travels along the tissue space along the interstitial tissue it picks up those waste products that are secreted by the cells such as carbon dioxide and ammonia and once the fluid is on the venule side on this side of the capillary because the osmotic pressure is now greater than the hydrostatic pressure the blood rushes back into the capillary of our body and now the deoxygenated blood that contains the waste products travels along the venule then into the veins and finally into the heart of our body now, it turns out that osmotic pressure on the venule side is not that much higher than the hydrostatic pressure. And what that means is not all of that blood plasma that left the capillary actually returns back into that capillary on the venule side. In fact, about 10% of that fluid that left the capillary and entered our tissue will remain in that interstitial space in the space surrounding our capillary. The question is, what happens to this 10% fluid? If this 10% fluid is not removed in any way, there will be a buildup of pressure as a result of the buildup of fluid inside that tissue and that will lead to swelling, the process of edema, and that can lead to very serious medical conditions and medical complications. So to prevent from this, uh, to prevent this from happening, what our body does and specifically what the lymphatic system does is it drains and removes that fluid into the system of vessels. Uh, we call lymph vessels or lymphatic vessels. These lymph vessels essentially connect with larger lymph vessels known as lymph veins and along the lymph vessels we have these regions known as lymph nodes and we'll talk about them in just a moment and these lymph nodes essentially filter our lymph from different types of pathogenic agents and eventually that lymph is returned back into our blood 
blood system via specific types of veins as we'll see in just a moment. And the reason we want to return our lymph back into our blood is because we want to ensure that the same volume of blood remains in our cardiovascular system. So once again, the question is what happens to the 10% fluid that remains in the tissue space? If it remains in the tissue space, it will lead to a continual buildup, the process of swelling, the process of edema. And to prevent this from happening, our body uses lymph vessels shown in green to drain this fluid out of the interstitial space. Now, the fluid, which is now known as lymph, travels along these venules, along, along these vessels, and eventually connects with these larger vessels we call lymph veins. And eventually the lymph veins reconnect with the blood vessels and the fluid is returned back into our blood circulation through the thoracic duct and the right lymphatic duct that both contains, uh, that both connects with special types of veins. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following diagram. So we have two important types of ducts, the thoracic duct as well as our right lymphatic duct. The thoracic duct essentially collects the lymph from the lower right part of the body, from the GI system, and from the left side of the body, the entire left side of the body, and it connects with our circulation system via the left subclavian vein. So the, this is the branchiocephalic vein, this is the right subclavian vein, and this is the left subclavian vein. Remember, the subclavian veins carries the deoxygenated blood from the arm portion and into the vena, uh, vena cava, which brings that blood to the right atrium of our body. And along the right subclavian vein, we have a connection between that vein and the right lymphatic duct while along this left subclavian vein, we have a connection between this thoracic duct and the left subclavian vein. So the lymph, once we actually filter that lymph, it returns back into the vein system of our body and back into the cardiovascular system. So we see that the right, lymph uh, the right lymphatic duct collects the lymph from the right side of the head, the neck and the chest and empties into the right subclavian vein. Now, previously we mentioned that one of the other functions of the lymphatic system is to filter our blood, to filter our lymph that travels along these lymph vessels. And this filtering process takes place in lymph nodes. So along many parts of our lymphatic system are small masses of tissue called lymph nodes. So this is one lymph node, a second lymph node, a third lymph node, and we have many of these lymph nodes along different regions of our body. Now, within these lymph nodes, we have cavities, we have sinuses, and within these cavities, we have specialized types of leukocytes, white blood cells. Now, when dendritic cells found in the tissue pick up pathogenic antigens, they carry these pathogenic antigens into our lymph nodes. And inside the lymph nodes, we have plasma cells that produce antibodies against these antigens. And these antibodies basically leave the lymph nodes along the other side and eventually they are dumped into our vein system. And that's how antibodies end up in the cardiovascular system in the blood vessels of our body. Now, within these lymph nodes, we also have other white blood cells, such as macrophages, that can engulf any type of pathogenic agent that might be present inside our lymph system. And in this manner, our lymphatic system not only drains our tissue and prevents the buildup of fluid inside the tissue, but it also filters our blood. It basically eats up and digests different types of pathogens that are found inside our blood, inside these specialized masses of tissue we call lymph nodes. Now, the final portion that I'd like to focus on is 
how that fluid actually gets into these lymph vessels in the first place and how the lymph travels along our lymph vessels. So let's take a look at the following diagram. So this is a small portion of our lymph vessel. Now notice along the lymph vessel we have these endothelial cells. So the walls of the lymph vessels consist of endothelial cells that overlap slightly and at the portions where they overlap, these overlapping portions act as one-way doors. And when, there is, and when there is a fluid buildup inside the tissue, that fluid pressure pushes on these overlapping sections, these one-way doors, and that opens these endothelial cells and allows fluid to actually flow into the endothelial cells. So for example, let's imagine that we have a buildup of pressure here, and so the fluid pushes against the overlapping portion, and the fluid moves into this cavity cavity, this region of our lymph vessel. Now, as the fluid builds up in the lymph vessel, it pushes back onto the, uh, this side, the other side of our endothelial cell, and because these endothelial cells open only one way and not the other way, when our hydrostatic pressure pushes on our uh, cells this way, the fluid cannot escape back because these overlapping regions between the cells only open this way and not the other way. And we also have a system of one-way valves found along the lymph vessel. So that means these valves also open one way and not the other way. So when there is a buildup of pressure here, it closes these overlapping regions so that fluid cannot exit that lymph node. It pushes against the valve that opens up and that allows the movement of lymph along our vessel as shown in the following diagram. And if there is a decrease in pressure and basically wants to move back, it cannot move back because when the fluid tries to move back, it forces these valves to actually close and that means we do not have a backflow of lymph inside our lymph system in the same way that we do not have a backflow inside our veins. Remember the veins also contain this valve system that prevents the movement of our lymph back down that lymph vessel. So the walls of the lymph vessels consist of endothelial cells that overlap slightly. When there is a buildup of fluid in the interstitial tissue in the tissue space, that creates fluid pressure that pushes on the cells. This opens up those overlapping regions forces the fluid into that lymph vessel. Now inside the lymph vessel, we have a system of one-way valves. These valves, as well as the overlapping portion of the endothelial cells open only in one direction and not the other. And this keeps the lymph inside that lymph vessel and it keeps it moving along one direction. Now, in the same way that our veins are situated next to our skeletal muscle and the contraction of our skeletal muscle promotes the movement of blood inside the veins, in the same exact way, the contraction of skeletal muscle pushes against our lymph vessels and that promotes the movement of lymph inside our lymphatic system.